thing. Being a servant and serving. If we can go to Romans chapter 6. And verse 6, uh, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So you have to serve somebody. Um, when I came to the Lord in 1980, um, Bob, not Bob Marley, the other Bob. What's the other Bob? Bob Dylan. He actually went through a, um, a born again phase and he brought out an album called Slow Train Coming, which was all gospel. And one of the songs was, you're going to have to serve somebody. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. And actually, we don't often quote from Bob Dylan, but as verse 16 says, there's only two choices. You can only serve... Um, Obedience unto righteousness, you serve God, or you serve sin, you serve uh, the world, you, you serve the devil. Verse 17, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered. So we were in the world, we were serving sin. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. So we were serving this world um, before we got spirit filled where jesus christ made us free from that but we were serving this world and we were oblivious to it we were slaves to this world slaves um, to the prince of the power of this air um, back in the 80s the world says that flares were no longer in and polar neck skivvies were out and the world said you have to go out and buy more clothes and so we did we were just slaves we did what the master was saying and later on you you need a better car because your neighbor's got a bmw you need a another bmw the next model up so we go yes world i'll go and work hard and get an, another car we were we thought we were doing our own thing we we're our own men but we were just slaves to this world but then um, jesus christ came to set us free so we're no longer serving this world we now serve him serve righteousness we're free from the bondage of this world which means i can keep my flares <laughs> and my polar next gibby yeah, no i reckon laurie would have worn one no okay we won't go there let's go to <laughs> philippians chapter two so we are free now we are free and but it's always a choice do we serve god or we just do we serve the world but Philippians chapter 2. And I guess the ultimate example of the perfect person who, was a, who showed that he was a servant is, of course, Jesus Christ in the Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So, Jesus is one with God, one with the Holy Ghost. It didn't, wasn't robbery for him to be equal with God. He was equal with God. But he, Jesus, made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So he left, left his uh, heavenly host where he was and he became a man. And not only just a man, he became a servant. Servant to God and really a servant to mankind because he he was obedient as it says the next verse um, and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross so Jesus Christ was a servant of God and also a servant of mankind for he died for mankind's sake obedient unto the death of the cross let's go to John chapter 12 John chapter 12 and verse 25, Jesus said, If any man serve me, 
let him follow me and where I am there shall also my servant be so now we're the spirit filled we serve Jesus Christ he's the captain of our salvation we serve him and it says if any man serve me him will my father honor so we live a life of service now to Jesus Christ and at the end of it, it says God will honor us and if we when the Lord comes back and we're still in service to our captain of our salvation Jesus Christ then God will raise us up and God will give us honor which is pretty good let's go to Mark chapter 9 Mark chapter 9 and verse 33. And he, Jesus, came to Capernaum and being in the, in the house, so he's inside the house, he asked them, the disciples, what was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? For they held their peace. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And that's a characteristic of, of man, one of his personalities is he wants to be the greatest that um, he wants to be above his fellow men um, and what natural man strives for to be the greatest and we'll go on and he sat down and called the twelve and saith unto them if any man desire to be first the same shall be last of all and servant of all so Jesus is saying, you know, if you want to be the greatest, you want to be the first one, well, actually do a 180 degree turn, be the last one. If you want to be first, be the last and be a servant. That's how, you, that's how you're going to be a great one. If you want to be the greatest, be the least and be a, be a servant. So he's turning it all around the wrong or the different way than what natural man would think. And he goes on to explain this in the next chapter, chapter 10, in verse 42. And Jesus called them, disciples, again, to him, and saith unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority unto them so what he's saying in with the gentiles in the world when someone's accounted to rule or someone's worked their way up that ladder of success they've gone that ladder of success and in them going up they have to push others down so they go up others go down and when they reach the top then they exercise lordship they execute authority you know, they're the top dog, they're in the high horse and when they've reached that position, after to get there they've had to push others down and then they execute authority over people um, and um, they lord it over them. And as Jesus said, that's, you know, the Gentiles, that's, and we can see that in the world today, that's, that's the corporation, the corporate world. Um, most people worked in some sort of a business and that's how it works if you, you see people they're climbing that ladder of their success but for them to go up they've got to stand on the others or they've got to throw others oops sorry throw others under the bus to make themselves look good they've got to push people down and when when they reach that level then they're the boss then they execute um, lordship they lord it over people and we see this uh, in the world obviously corporations politics another huge example i mean who want to was that on you know, the news today about the corruption the the labor the labor's they had some iback report and there's like huge corruption and then squeaky clean dan says yeah it's bad but i'm you know i'm good you know um so he's sort of same thing is dragging himself up um Catholic Church is probably a, a classic too, with the Pope 
to be a pope again, you've got to climb that ladder of success. You've got to be a, something, a choir boy and then a altar boy and then a something, a cardinal and a whatever. And then finally, after you're shoving people out the road, you get to be a pope. And then you can lord it over people. What the, he's the, he says he's God on earth. He's the vicar of Jesus Christ. He's instead of Jesus Christ. And, you know, in the, in the old medieval in the old days, the Dark Ages, where the, the Pope had armies to execute his lording over people, his uh, judgments on people, and his, he would command them to do things, and he had armies that would carry it out. So you either got uh, tortured or executed, there was inquisitions. And again, it was what Jesus was saying, that's what happens in the world. Or even in today, you might have people coming up and claiming they're a, they're a great prophet or they're a, and a great apostle. I am in a great apostle. Well, who said? You know, I don't read in the Bible where in the New Testament God's going to name particular people to be great apostles, but these people, they raise themselves up and they're a great apostle and they're above and people are beneath and they, they lord it over people. And um, that's the way of the world. Because Jesus said the next verse in 43, he said, But so shall it not be among you. That happens in the world. You know, people have got their ladder of success and they're climbing up, they're climbing up, they're pushing people down, they're climbing up, and then they're at the top and everyone else is down below and they lord it over them. That's the world. Jesus said, It shall not be among you. That's not how the church works. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. He'll minister. He'll be your servant. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. In other words, Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So what Jesus is saying is in, in the world, that's how it works, but not in the church. See, in the church, it's, it's actually the complete opposite. If you want to be great in the eyes of God, well, be the least. You know, get off your ladder of success, get on the ground level, and be a servant, be a minister. Actually, lift people up, support people, lift people up. You see how it's the complete opposite? In the world, you're at the top, you're pushing people down. But in the church, you're actually ground level and you're lifting, you're supporting people, you're serving people. You're actually on the bottom and you're exalting, you're lifting people up. And in fact, the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 2, we'll turn to it, uh, points this out rather wonderfully. How the Bible always backs itself up. Ephesians. Um, chapter. Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 19. Now therefore ye are. That's us. You are no more strangers and foreigners. But fellow citizens with the saints. And the household of God. And, that's us, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So that's, that's the, the structure of the church. This is the, the way to be um, great in God's eyes is to be the least and to be on the ground and you're a foundation you're lifting others up, you're supporting others up. It's the complete opposite of the way of the world. And of course, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. He's the one that is, even though he was in the, um, the heaven, heavenly heavens, he lowered himself to become a man. Now he's lowered himself to be a foundation of the whole work. He's supporting the whole work. He isn't up on his ladder of success, looking down, 
he's actually supporting, raising everyone up. And that's, that's the key difference. We, if you want to be great in God's eyes, well then be least in your own eyes. Throw away that ladder of success. Get on the grand level and support. Lift, lift people up. Um, let's go to First Corinthians. So we're going to look at the great Apostle Paul, and that's what we call him. We call him the great Apostle Paul. Um, you know, look at the things that he did. Now, pretty amazing. A whole Asia Minor heard the word of the Lord. The whole Asia Minor was turned upside down. He, churches were established. You write most of the New Testament. We call him the great Apostle Paul, but how does, that's how we see him, but how does Paul see himself? Does he see himself as the great Apostle Paul? Hi, I am the great Apostle Paul. You may speak to me, but first you may polish my boots and wash my car, and then I may speak to you. Was that how he was? Of course not. Cars weren't invented then. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. What does the great Apostle Paul say of himself? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Oh, hang on. Sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 9. Paul says, For I am the least of the apostles. This is the great apostle Paul. In his eyes, he says, I'm the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle. I should even be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. So to be great in God's eyes, the first thing you've got to do is be to be the least in your own eyes. Paul here was following Jesus' method of success. If you want to be great, be the least. Be a servant. Get on the ground level. Support, lift up people. And Paul says, I'm the least of the apostles. I wanted to say, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I mean, he wasn't stupid. He probably knew he was doing pretty good because of all the amazing things he did. But did that go to his head? He says, it says And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I laboured more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was within me. And he didn't say, yeah, but I did it myself. I'm a great one. He said, whatever I did, it was the grace of God in me that did it. Not of my strength, not of my doings. I'm just a vessel and God used me and I appreciate that. But the amazing things that that um, I did or the labour that I did was all due to the grace of God. So all in all, a good attitude. Um, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty, and use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So our, our service to, the, to Jesus and to God is, is voluntary. You know, we're not, we're not forced to, to serve. This is in Romans 8 that we haven't received the spirit of bondage. Um, we're not slaves to God. We're not forced to serve. It's it's our it's our free will. It's voluntary. So we're called to liberty. Liberty, and use that wisely. Don't use liberty for occasion to the flesh. Don't use your choice to serve to go and serve sin, to go and serve the world, because at the end of that is just death. But be wise, and use your liberty at a choice by love, to serve one another. Again, you have to serve somebody. We choose to serve 
God, to serve righteousness, and by that, by love, we serve one another. First Corinthians chapter 9. Just closing off now. First Corinthians chapter 9. Again, Paul speaking. Uh, verse 19, chapter 9, verse 19. For though I be free from all men, so again he's saying I've, I'm called into liberty. I don't owe the flesh anything. I'm not debtors to the flesh. But though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. So it's my choice, but I'm going to make myself a servant unto all. And he's really talking here about preaching the gospel. He says, unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them under the law, to them that are without laws, without law, being not without law to cross, that I might gain them that are without law to the weak, became I was weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So his service was to preach the gospel. And that's our service, of course, to preach the gospel. Um, not only preach the gospel as our service, but our service is to one another, as we read before, by love serve one another. Um, you see a brother or sister in need, a chilly one degree day at Geelong and it's, you don't just go be warmed and filled and do nothing the Bible talks about that faith without works is dead so we serve one another we serve the people in the world by preaching the gospel we serve Jesus Christ we serve God the Father our whole life is service because it is anyway if we're going to serve God or we're going to serve the world. So we choose to serve God. Our whole life is service. And at the end of all that serving, when the Lord comes back, he'll look us in the eye and say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And all that serving will be worthwhile. I wonder what happens the split second after that <coughs> that uh, statement is made to us. I wonder what happens. It's going to be pretty good. But we'll find out one day. We'll leave it there. Amen. <laughs>